Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Mango Seed Faith. This is your girl Stacy Anderson. I have a beautiful young lady here with me. And I know her as Lala. You know her as Lala Living Life. Am I saying it right? Lala Living Life. LA okay. Living Life. <laughs> um, I know Lala for a very long time. Very Might long as well time. call it 20 years, okay? 20 plus. So um, we just want to come to you, just come together and just share from our hearts. Yep. And we would just hope that you would just take this moment just to listen. You know what we have been through. We have been very transparent, very open. We haven't hidden anything, but we always go according to how God leads us. Yeah. Um, we don't um, just go from what we want to say, yeah. but we allow God to just share through us because he knows who's listening. Many of you have reached out to me who have also gone through similar situations. So we just want to take the time to just address certain points. If you remember on one of my videos, it was for Mother's Day and I said that um, I almost had forgot, but God wanted me to just say a prayer for those mothers and the different things. Um, and in that prayer, the things that I touched on um individuals are like wow this girl knows what she's talking about i only know because of what i have been through okay and if you don't know as i've always tell you just go back look at our stories i'm going to tag lala's information on here as well because she has so much to share her story is a little bit different than mine but trust me you can relate to it and you'll be able to gain healing from it because we have been able to get healing from it and we're still healing still we're still healing, healing. Yeah. so i'm gonna have lala just kind of introduce herself you know hey what's up you know <laughs> <laughs> and you realize lala is very easy to talk to yeah. lala is very down to earth this is no put on or nothing like that her so accent funny. might just come out like how my eyes do but yes. feel free comment subscribe i want you ought to just go over on her page. As I say, I'm gonna link her information on here so that you can go in and enjoy her videos. On Mondays, she always puts up videos mm -hmm. and it's about food, it's about life, you know, it's about, you know, clothing and stuff like that, healthy everything, living, yeah. you know, she try to incorporate everything in there. There's laughter, there's serious times, there's encouragement. So you get it all from that one channel. All right, Lala, take it away. <laughs> hey guys, hey everybody. So yes, my name is Lala. Um, and as Stacy said, I do have my YouTube channel that I just started up, LA Living Life. Um, and I'm just excited to be here with Stacy. Stacy was one of the first persons to reach out to me when I experienced what I went through and to just encourage me. And I so greatly appreciate, I appreciated that. Um, oh, Stacy oh, knew me since I was six years old. Stop it! <laughs> And now I am 36 yes. years old. <laughs> so that tells you. Um, Stacy's known me for a long time. And, and as she said, it's the same for Stacy. We don't put on, right? The same re same person she would have known 30 years ago. That's me now. Still fun loving, still crazy, still transparent. And just, yeah, I don't, I don't even know how to say it. Still serving God, right? Yes, and that's yes. the most important part. And we're not ashamed of it. And we're not ashamed, ashamed of, of it at all, mm -hmm. right? So... Listen, I'm just excited to be here, Stacy. Yes, I'm just happy to be with you too. When Stacy asked um, for this to happen, I was like, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because um, as she said, we're still healing. We are still healing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we continue to have these conversations. Yes, yes. So we're going to just touch on some points. Yeah. Um, so this um, video, we're mainly talking about healing after a miscarriage or miscarriages and what has helped us, um, different points that individuals um, brought to my attention that we're gonna touch on. Mm -hmm. Always feel free to leave comments. I know some people are not, um, a com what's the word? They're not comfortable um, leaving comments so they'll just send me messages and stuff like that. And, and then I would then address as well. So when you're going through a miscarriage, let me just back up for a second. Because even while I was going through a miscarriage, because this is one of the points, while you're going through something, someone else will come and reach out to you and you now have to find a strength mm. to encourage them while you are hurting. Sure. It's not easy. Not and sometimes they don't even know that you're mm. going through that too. Sure. But it also helps for healing for yourself and you're shedding tears and you're just trying to, you know, help that individual through while listening to yourself. Yeah. 
a support system is something that is so very important important i can't yeah. stress that enough yeah. this is where you have to really ask god to show you individuals that you can talk to mm -hmm. because it's not everybody you can talk your business to it's so true Everybody don't like you, love you, and want the best for you. It's so true, Stacey. So I always had individuals, prayer warriors, people who really genuinely want the best and love you and would encourage you. Yeah. No matter what time of the day it is, you could just pick up that person and pick up the phone, sorry, and just be like, hey, girl, I'm going through this mm -hmm, or whatever. And mm -hmm. they're like, hey, talk to me. Let's pray about it. Yeah. Um, your spouse, your partner, your significant others, your mom, your dad, just whoever, um, family wise that you feel comfortable because everyone is not comfortable still, you know, yeah. sharing stuff like that with family. Yeah, it's true. And and not only that, like some people, I remember during our time, we had people that came over, they brought flowers, they brought a book and they just sat with us. And even if there was nothing really that we wanted to talk about, right, they would just sit down with us. And eventually it would, you know, go into us talking about what happened, but it wasn't them coming to pry. Mm -hmm. You know, them just being present helped to create the space for us to share. Wow. And I think that that's important, you know. So if you know someone that's gone through a miscarriage, is going through a miscarriage. I'm going to say that because the... They miscarried, but they also are going through the emotions and um, the physical impairments of the miscarriage, the mental mm -hmm. impairments, right? The spiritual mm -hmm. impact of it. Um, sometimes just sitting with that person, just going over, sitting with them, bringing them their favorite ice cream, mm -hmm. saying, what do you want to eat today, right? Because a lot of people did that to me. And even though I didn't want to eat, them asking, I was able to say, hey, I'm good, but thank you, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not what we can say to that person, but it's more so, hey, how can I just, what are the ways that can be supportive to them? Can I just sit with them? Can I send them something? Um, so find those different avenues because words fail us, but uh, being present um, can be very impactful. And can I say sometimes we don't know what we want? We don't, not during um... those times. Sometimes you just want to be still, just don't say anything. You just yeah. trying to process everything yourself, yeah. trying to filter out your emotions. Yeah. I know for me, I just fought depression so much. Still. And it's like, I always say to my husband, I know what depression feels like. Uh -huh. I'm not going back there. Yeah. But, um, and another thing is when you find yourself feeling low, my mom used this word. She said, shake that bad boy off. I'm shake saying it, it proper. <laughs> True, yeah. Shake that bad boy off because if you let it linger, it's going it's, to consume you. And you it is harder to rise from it. So Yeah. Yeah. It helps. The support system it, it Absolutely. helps a lot. Absolutely. And you don't always, as you said, the thing I like that you said is that they just sat with you. They just sat. you don't have to say anything. Just but sit. they just sat with you. And that brings me to another point. Knowing what to say. You you yeah. have to know what to say to individuals. And if you don't know what to say, please don't say anything. Yeah, don't yeah. say anything because sometimes you say something causes more damage. And I think after going through a miscarriage, one of the things that used to hurt me the most is when people will say, you know, don't worry, try again. And you guys will see mm. in the video, you know, mm. um, that me and my husband did. If you get a chance to watch it, you know, that was one of my things. Don't worry, you know, try again. Um, God will give you another one, you know, and it, for me... In short, I had a late term miscarriage. I actually had to push out my daughter. Mm -hmm. I got to see her, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it became very, um, how should I say it? Like dismissive of her, right? God's going to give you another one. But I, I just had her, right? I just had her. I so just saw grieve her. her. Yeah. I have to grieve her, you know? I, I, I don't undermine God's ability to give me another one. Mm -hmm. But allow me time to grieve mm -hmm. her. That mm -hmm. child that I had hoped for, mm -hmm. that child that I carried, yep. right? Yep. Give me a time, give me time to grieve her. We have to be very mindful that we're not dismissive, mm -hmm. dismissive of people's emotions, of people's state of mind. Um, first of all, it's not Christ-like. Christ was not dismissive of people's state, 
right? When he saw the blind man, when he saw the disabled mm -hmm. man, he always spoke about their current state mm -hmm. and what he was pulling them out of. So me being able to say, yes, I'm in a state where I'm sad because I lost yes. my child. Yes. That's not a sin. Like I can say that. Of course. I can experience that. Absolutely. It's not a sin. I know who my redeemer is. I know he'll pull me out from this place. But let's not be dismissive of what I'm experiencing. God's ability to give me another child does not mean mm -hmm. I cannot grieve the one that I mm -hmm. just lost. Mm -hmm. And I really think that we have to be very mindful of that when we are communicating with people who have just experienced a miscarriage. Just mm -hmm. be mindful of that. Don't be quick to tell them, try yeah. again. You yeah. know, don't be quick to tell yeah. them, you're going to get another one. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, don't cry mm -hmm. over what you've lost. You know, we can't be so quick to dismiss what they have mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. I love it. Tala, you're you're hitting some, you're hitting the nail on the head, because I think that it's gonna it, educate individuals to really realize what they should do and what they should not do, yeah. and just really just being mindful. And as I say, if you're not sure, just don't don't say anything. Mm -hmm. Doctors would say to me. Um, you're gonna try again, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to hear anything about that. I I, I don't want to hear yeah, that. Yeah. And I remember a time a doctor gave gave me medication because she wasn't sure I was if I was ovulating or not. And I called her and I said, I'm in so much pain, and I don't even know if I can say this on YouTube. So I'll see if see if I can say it if proper. there's kids in the room. <laughs> well, usually on my video, I put I no kids. Remember. I know I, I do remember. too, but still, if there's kids, hold on. I'll just yeah. say proper. I'll just say proper. Um, Cause I think my nieces and nephews and stuff will be watching too. Um, you're in pain. You should be doing the do right now. Oh, okay. so, so doctors have a way of also not being mindful of. Okay, I'm just trying. I'm still. Yeah, it's taking me a little bit long. I can't just hop and skip and just move mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. But don't just tell me. I just need to. Yeah, yeah. Because to me, that's such a sacred thing where I should be. Enjoy my husband, but now it felt like homework. Like you had to do it because you're trying right. to Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I can't be bothered with this. So don't put that pressure on me that, okay, if you want to be a mom, you need to, you need, let's go, let's go. It doesn't work that and way. That's what try again tells you though. That's what try again says to you though. Every time they say try again, you're telling, I literally, you, I was, we were talking a little bit before. Mm -hmm. And when I had my um, fibroid surgery, um, the doctor told me, wait six to nine months. Mm -hmm. Right after I had the surgery, people were telling me, so when are you going to try again? I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not the time to say it's that. It's not the time to say that. Like, let me heal. And I, I get it. And I, and I, and this is the thing I want to um, also just hit on. I get it. Your intentions are good. You really want to see us get what we desire. I get it. However, mm -hmm. your good intentions can be... The Bible says, don't let your good become evil spoken mm -hmm. of, right? Mm -hmm. And so your good intentions can become an evil thing to the person, right? It can become something that that is distasteful to them because they know they're not in that physical position, sometimes mental That's position, to it. try again at that moment, right? And so, it, like Stacey said, if you don't have anything to say, just be quiet, right? Or if, if for, for our Christian, because if you're not Christian, then this may not apply to you. This is reality. But for Christian folks, be sensitive to the spirit. That's it. See if the spirit is giving you a word for that person. If they're giving you a scripture for that person. It may not even be pertaining to the miscarriage, but just how God can uplift them in this season, right? So just be very discerning of how you're approaching those individuals be very discerning about what they're currently going through maybe ask them about that first like hey how are you how are you in this process hmm. is this a process mm -hmm. so how are you in this process and say after no you, popcorn thing right <laughs> and after you had that whole conversation then you can say well i look forward to you being able to try again right, right? It, i it, like that that sounds real it. nice and right? <laughs> yes. it changes it yeah. it changes the context how are you in the process at the end of it now i look forward and to it you. takes that pressure off yeah it takes that pressure off it does it does we have we have to also remember is like when you are checking on the mom we're gonna say the mom because we need to speak positive we need to speak things yeah 
you know, my mom always said happy Mother's Day when I wasn't a mother, but her yes. thing is the fact that you were pregnant. And I've had individuals say to me, thank God that you were even able to be pregnant. Yes. I've never been pregnant, so thank God for that. My so I had to that. learn yeah. that too. There's a lot of females that don't know what pregnancy feel like. So they've true. never felt a kick. They've never seen a heartbeat. None of that stuff. Yeah. So we still have a lot to give God thanks for, even though it ends in a loss. Thank you, God, for allowing our bodies because it's not an easy thing for your body to go through. Pregnancy is a rough thing it is rough. on your body. Your it body ain't the same. Hey, I used to be called olive oil. Like, do I look like olive oil now? <laughs> <laughs> I am not olive oil. <laughs> oh, stay supposed to be like this. <laughs> yes, I'm sick. Yeah. And we also, the thing that I, I really appreciated when I was going through my miscarriages is that some individual also checked on my husband. It it's wasn't nice. just about me. It's nice. And it made him feel really, what's the word? Um, help me, Lala. What's the word? It's like, like, like he was seen. Right. Because you, when you put all the focus on mom, it's like, well, I might just chop liver. Now, yeah. he never said that, but he was going through as well. Yeah. And I knew Craig was feeling that way sometimes. I knew Craig was feeling that way. I think... What what um what I truly appreciated mm -hmm. was I remember one night we were just here and one of our church brothers, Brother Chris, he called Craig and he just started encouraging Craig. Mm. Right? And I think in that whole call, it was like a fifteen minute call, mm -hmm. he said, How's Lala doing? Mm -hmm. Craig said she's fine. And then he spoke to him. Wow. He spoke into him. Mm. And what Craig just kept shaking his head. Like Craig just kept shaking his head. Mm -hmm. And at the end he said, thank you so much, my brother. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt so like enlightened by that. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. I saw him being poured into him being encouraged. Person ain't even asked to talk to me. It's only so much we can do. It's only so much we can do. Yeah. yeah. Especially when we're in that state. Mm -hmm. I used to just be laid out on the couch. I would just be on the couch. Just <laughs> like, and, and, and Craig would just watch me every day. Just mm. sit on the couch, not really be able to move much. Mm. Cause Unfortunately, it took a toll on my body. Yep, it will. It, it will. That it took a major toll on mm -hmm. my body. Mm -hmm. My healing was for eight weeks <laughs> after the miscarriage, mm -hmm. not my surgery. Mm -hmm. The miscarriage, eight wow. weeks. Wow. Eight weeks, and so to see during that eight weeks, mm -hmm. somebody to call and just lift him up, mm -hmm. I felt so good about mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. now he was seen. Now he was heard. Mm -hmm. Now someone saw that he too was in pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, yeah, we, we can't be dismissive of the fathers as well. Yeah. We can't ignore the fathers, the pain that they went through. Um, yeah. Mm. He hoped for a daughter. That's it. He hoped for a daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought he was going to be able to play with his daughter. And Lala, I'm trying to hold tears. I, it's like I knew that doing this would be very emotional. Yeah. Yes, I have a son, but those four loss. The four loss. Four loss. And it's like, and like we said, like I was telling you before, even the third one was so hard because I was one week from going into my second, so getting over that first mm -hmm. trimester. Mm -hmm. You know how they always say, once you get over the first trimester, then it's a green light, it's a go. Oh. Yeah. And I was counting, I was counting, and it was like, I was right there when I started to spot. And I'm like, here we go again. This is just too familiar. So it's like when I listen, it's like I'm over here and it's like I just feel like I'm listening to you. Yeah. He wants a child. He wants a child. You want to be able to. It's like you just want to be a mom. You just want to be a dad. Stacy, I, I just, I, for those that have experienced miscarriages, my heart goes out to you because, mm -hmm. of course, we know we empathize with it. You know, I remember I used to watch YouTube videos. And not only YouTube videos, but I used to hear my doctor, hear my doctor mm -hmm. say to me, you're going into your second trimester. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Mm -hmm. And they would always say, yeah, by the time you're in your second trimester, you're good. good. You've got to clear. you got to clear. You're good to go. And when I went to my second trimester appointment, my doctor evaluated me. She mm -hmm. said, you're good now. You're over the see, hump. See? She said, you're good now. You're over the hump. And I remember I called my husband. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're in the second trimester. Mm -hmm. The heartbeat's mm -hmm. good. She was on. Um, she was... The last ultrasound that we had, 
she was snuggled into me. She turned her back to the camera. Wow. And I remember the doctor was saying, look at her. She just wants to be all into mm. you. And I remember oh walking out gosh. of that appointment. I said, oh, God, that's how my daughter's going to be. Mm -hmm. She's going to snuggle mm -hmm. up to me. Like, that's how mm -hmm. she's going to be in real life. Mm -hmm. Then a week later, oh God. to start oh, having sorry, pain. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, Stacey. A week later, to start having pain mm -hmm. that... The hospital can't mm. tell you what's going on. I was going to say that. When they can't give you answers to say why it happened. They can't give you answers, mm -mm. right? So the week later, you do what you're supposed to do. You mm -hmm. go to the ER. They tell you, hey, your baby's fine. Ooh. They tell you, hey, your baby's fine. Then a week later, right, they're in the ER and they're mm -hmm. telling you you're having miscarriage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So can you just, in the pain, and to Stacey's point, right? For me, it was the one. A late-term miscarriage, yes, but it was just the one. But I remember saying to my husband, I, I don't I don't see how people go through this. Mm -mm. And we had a conversation one night because I, I was having pop like palpitations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I had to go see a cardiologist. Mm -hmm. This is after miscarriage. Even knowing that I had to do fiber surgery, mm -hmm. I started having these heart. My heart was just racing, racing. I remember I went to the ER. The man said, hey, you must be having nightmares. I said, this is a nightmares. Nightmares? I said, my heart, while I'm sleeping, my heart is going 120. 120. Uh -uh. Stacy, people don't understand, you know, 120 beats per second. What was it, Craig? Per, per minute, per second. Is that how the, the heart no, So the normal, correct me if I'm wrong, is between 80 to 100 yes. beats per minute. Per minute. Mine was 120. Yeah, so you should have been actually feeling it. Like boom, boom, boom. I would be, I would literally be sleeping and I wake it up, wake up out of my sleep. And the first thing Craig would say, you know, did you have a dream? Are you able, like, you know, are, are you able to breathe? Because they're thinking about like anxiety and stuff like that. I know. Yeah. It was just my heart racing. Wow. And I'm, I'm going through all of this, right? While I'm still trying to recover mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. not having my child, mm -hmm. right? So like your body's going through all of this. Jesus. Your body's going through all of this. You're still trying to just mentally cope. Like, I didn't have an opportunity. I remember looking at Craig in the room and I said, I know God has given me a promise. But right now, I don't even feel like I'm going to live to see the promise fulfilled. Jesus. I said, how do you live with that? Where things are happening in your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, God, I get the miscarriage, but now I'm not even going to live to see the promise fulfilled again. Like, the you literally have people speak over my life and say, hey, God's going to give you what your, your heart mm -hmm. desires. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had that conversation and, and the, the papa, it didn't, it didn't get better. It didn't get oh, better. Wow. It, didn't, wow. it didn't get better. But fortunately, they didn't see anything. Thank God. They didn't see anything. And, and now it's better. I started yeah. to work out and slow, surely, but slowly, but surely mm -hmm. as I was working out, it started to, yeah. you know, level off. But just that in those moments when people are experiencing this, they don't necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel. They just see what's going on they, at that moment. And it's overwhelming. It, it becomes that consistent reminder that something has happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I remember I, I, I talked to God about that now. Like my body is a reminder. This temple mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a consistent reminder mm -hmm. that something has happened. Yeah, yeah. The fibroid surgery mm -hmm. is a consistent reminder. Mm -hmm. The scar is a consistent reminder that mm -hmm. something has happened. Mm -hmm. Like we we get these consistent reminders that we just have to live with. <laughs> However, we have a God, right? Yeah. And and that's that's it right there. Like we have a God mm -hmm. that even when we get these reminders, He is fully capable yep. to renew our minds in those moments. And we have to remember that. And we he have is to remember capable. He's capable. Nothing impossible. So as you begin to think of a thought in doubt, mm -hmm. he begins to restore that thought mm -hmm. in hope. And that's something that's the God we serve. So the enemy tries to bring it to your mind mm -hmm. so that you can be doubtful of God's plan. Mm -hmm. But then he renews your mind so that you become hopeful of his yes. plans. Yes, thank you, God. Isn't that something?
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so for, you know, for those that are struggling, because like we said, we're still in the healing process. Yeah. But just yeah. remember that you serve a God who is capable to renew, to restore, mm. to change your mind regarding mm. your situation. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm going to say. It's the, the, the ch it may not change. The situation may not change. But we have a God who mm -hmm. is able mm -hmm. to change the way we see it. That's it. Yeah. A lady reached out to me from back home. And she says um, she usually had like a service on Facebook, like say twice a week or something. And she says, I want you to like bring forward a word and share your story and stuff. And I made sure I prayed up that whole week just so I could be prepared because I'm going to be talking to strangers. God, you have to show me what to share because I don't know. Mm -hmm. Because you have to understand, when God told me to share about my brain tumor, I had a big argument with God. <laughs> because because I ain't trying to show share. it. And he's still going through it. <laughs> Stop asking me to share my business because yeah. I don't want these people to know because I don't want pity. And that's another thing. I don't want pity. I don't want pity. Or sympathy. Yeah. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Nope. I'm sharing this to encourage. And it's like mm -hmm. God had a bigger and a better plan. And then when God said, you need to share your miscarriage, I was like, nope, I'm done. Forget this. <laughs> you, you already asked me to share something hard, but the hardest thing was the miscarriages. Yeah. So when I named like my video, Miscarriage 1, Miscarriage 2, and then I would see like comments coming in. And my friends would, my friends would be like, Lord God, no. Two, mm. three, they didn't know about four. Like Job friends. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And it was like, God, you have to give me the strength. And how I knew I still wasn't healed from going through the um, miscarriage, because then you're going to always, like, you, there are times you're going to feel so strong, and there's going to mm -hmm. be times you're just going to be like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wasn't healed when I began to speak on it. And I, my voice started to quiver first, and you feel that nut. And I just kept on speaking. And my, I literally just bawled, but I just kept on speaking. And I remember saying, this is to, for someone, but this is also for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized, boy, Stacey, you're still hurting with you're that third hurting. one. You're still hurting. Yeah. Yeah. And as you say, you, you, you don't forget. You can't just move on. So because I have my son, I can't just say, well, forget the four. No, yeah, yeah, you can't. But I don't want to be that individual. And maybe there's someone, you've had a miscarriage, say, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and you're still hurting. You have to get to that point where, God, help me to heal from this. Because I don't want it to... And that was one thing I said to God. I need healing. I went into counseling. Especially in the Caribbean, counseling is something that's looked down upon. Because it's like, I ain't crazy. And so I'm going crazy. Yeah. So it's like when I would go before starting to feel those emotions. So my counselor would be like, why are you here? I said, well, I just went through um, a miscarriage. Um, I'm not emotional or anything, but I just wanted to kind of take a pill before I get that headache kind of mm -hmm. thing. And when I realized things got bad is when I'm counseling my counselor. <laughs> how, how are we doing this? So my husband would be like, how was your session? I was like, well, I found myself not talking about me because my counselor is talking about her her health. She's telling me all about her health stuff, and but and I drove so far to go down there. So I'm like, this is not really Listen, helping me. I'm I'm just gonna say some things. So I'm a therapist based on my degree. Mm -hmm. I don't do therapy now, but mm -hmm. my degree. That's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen. It's not supposed to happen. So I just stopped going. <laughs> But then I realized, like, my husband would, would say to me, what about counseling or whatever? Because now he's seeing something in me that I don't see. Yeah. So there may be times where your behavior change. You're not going to see it, but your but husband your will. will and it. then as soon as he says something, then you'll be able to, like, okay, time to get myself in chance. Yeah, yeah. So counseling is not a bad it's thing a because bad thing. it has helped me through my miscarriages. Yeah. So we need to take that stigma off of counseling because it has helped me through a lot. And, it, and, and, and the purpose of counseling, guys, it's not... I think so much times in, in the um, Christian culture, we immediately attribute counseling to, to spiritual things, mm -hmm. right? Like like they're going to 
um, rub off spiritually on you. And that's not what it's supposed mm. to be. It's actually not what it's supposed to be. Just like you go to a doctor and you don't question if they're there, if they're Muslim, you don't question if they're Jewish. Mm -hmm. You actually go to the Jewish doctors because they're the best doctors, right? Okay. <laughs> so the, the, just be, just like with doctors, they are they they go to school mm -hmm. to learn about the mind. They go to school to learn about patterns, right? Clinically, clinical licensed clinicians mm -hmm. that learn about how to help you to break patterns, okay? And when I was in school, I have my master's in social work. When I was in school, they taught us don't, the only time you approach someone regarding religion is if they're of the same belief. Right. If they Makes bring sense. it up, then you meet them right. where they're at. But never mm -mm. bring religion mm -mm. into the mix because that's not your, that's not what your degree is about. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing the mind and how to break trends, how to break cycles, mm -hmm. right? And so let me, I'm just saying that, throwing that out there first. Mm -hmm. They are clinical licensed clinicians that help you to break cycles. That's what a therapist is. Now, I will say, if you're going to look for a therapist, look for a Christian therapist though, right? Look for a Christian therapist because they are now going to be able to bring in that biblical element, mm -hmm. right? To match your um, the therapeutic element as well. With that being said, as a therapist um, or a former therapist, right? <laughs> therapist by degree. I told my husband the other day that I think I need to find a therapist. I it's really, helpful. It's helpful. I think, and I said to him that, you know, I said, I know what depression is clinically, but to experience it now physically, like myself, it doesn't look the way that people think it looks. Like depression can either be the extreme where you feel like you right. just want to sleep all day. You don't want to talk don't to anybody. Bathe. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you also have those who are expressing who have depression, but they're still a social butterfly. Right. Mm. But inside they're experiencing deep hurt and pain. And I told him, I don't feel like it's an oppression. Right. So let's talk about spiritual thing. I don't feel like it's a spiritual oppression, mm -hmm. but I do feel like it's a feeling that I'm having. Right. And. Mm -hmm. For me, I know that depression can come manifest itself through spirits. I know that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I didn't feel like it was a spiritual oppression. There wasn't a spirit that was on me. But there was things that the enemy was trying to plant in my yeah. head to make me accept depression. That's it. To make mm -hmm. me accept depression. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we, we had a concert the other night at our church and someone actually came to minister. They just came to minister. They, they didn't even sing. They came to minister. And she she said it to me. She said, I, I, she said, I pulled depression, wow. depression off of you. And when she said it, I said to my husband, I wasn't, it wasn't in my head, you know. This was something that I felt like the enemy was trying to put on me. And we have to be, we have to be honest with ourselves regarding those mm -hmm. things. Like mm -hmm. I know as Christians, we don't want to say, you know, I feel, I'm feeling some anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like depression is coming on me, but we have to speak those things. Like we have to speak mm -hmm. those things so that we can identify the enemy's plan. Like mm -hmm. you identified devil. I know you're trying to make yeah. me depressed. Yeah. I know that the things you're trying to speak in my mind is to plant seeds of depression, right? Call it out. And I won't accept it. That's mm -hmm. how you know what you're going to accept and you're not going to accept. Call yeah. out those things. You're trying to put sickness on my body so that I'm not able to fully function in ministry. I'm not able to fully function day to day and mm -hmm. I won't accept it. Like it's the things that we accept. Now we start to believe those things in our heart. And the Bible says that out of our heart flows the issues of life. Mm -hmm. Let's not accept things and plant it in right. our heart because we don't want to actually point it out and say, hey, this is what the devil's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like let's not accept it. Well, how is healing going to come if you don't if you don't really just call it out what call it really it is? Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need healing. I'm hurting. Yeah. Yep. I'm hurting. And the things that the enemy are saying, it sounds appealing to mm -hmm. me, right? It sounds appealing for him to say, hey, just lay in bed all day. Don't go to right. church. Right. right. It sounds appealing, but it's that's a plan of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. To make you feel separated from God. To make you feel as though, hey, God's not going to talk to you today. So you should just stop praying. Hmm. Don't pray. It doesn't make any sense. Because whether you pray or not, you're still going to feel the same way. That's the enemy's plan. He wants you to feel like, hey, you're stuck in a situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is how it's going to be all the way. But like I said, when the enemy plants doubt, mm -hmm. God is fully able. Yes, he is. To plant hope in your heart. 
So, yeah. And that's why so many, this topic people don't talk about. And a lot of times for myself, you just, um, you hurt in silence. Hmm. And you deal with it yourself because you don't know who you could tell or whatever. But that's how the enemy wants you to just curl up. Curl up. And just sit down and oh me, oh my. I used to have pity parties, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. Like, God, I'm a good Christian. I try to be the best Christian me I can. Me too. So I don't understand. <laughs> yes. And I got to this point. Happen? This, this, this just ain't fair. Yeah. This, this just not right. Yeah, yeah. I'm I like, God, you. come on, me, me, come on, me. I did it the right way, God. Like, why, why me? And David did that though. In yes. Psalms, we see. So it's human nature, mm -hmm. like, and it's okay. Because I always would say to Craig, "Look at the people on the street. <laughs> right? They got five, fifteen babies, and look at me, just the one. The one got to take care of. The one. Mm -hmm. So I, I had pity parties too. I did. I did as well. But as we say, you can't, you can't stay in that because then it will mess you up. It will mess you up. But um, these are things that we just really wanted to just point out you know we we have other little points um the different triggers did we talk about that the different no. triggers um one of my triggers is seeing an older person <laughs> that's pregnant and here i am young yeah or you see someone with a bunch of kids or um especially especially working in the medical field i've had individuals come to me and say i'm gonna have an abortion Listen to me. Mm. I've gotten to a point where I say, bring the child, come. If you <laughs> feel as if you... I, yeah. I'm, I'm so anti-abortion. It wasn't because I was having a hard time having. I, I just don't believe in killing a boy child. Yeah, yeah. Bring, bring, come, let me take care, you know. And I've had individuals call me back and after they have their child and say, thank you. Mm. So, hey, so we're going to stop here because... You know, we have so much more to unpack. And with this topic, we just can't do it in one video. Come on. You, do, do you still have more stuff, more lingering questions and hoping that we touch this and we touch that? So if you can, please leave a comment. Can you touch on this, Stacey and Lala? Or send us messages if you have our contact information. Yeah. Just touch stuff that we may have missed because we're talking from our experience or what others have said to us. So just look out for part two and we're going to address a whole lot more. All right. So until next time, don't forget to share, subscribe. And you know our girl Lala. Come on, y'all. Make sure you check out her stuff. You will learn a lot. You will learn a lot. She has good content. So check out her stuff. Share, subscribe. Love you guys always. Bye.